Welcome to the 35th Annual Lucille Lortel Awards, celebrating outstanding achievement off-Broadway for the first time online. And now, here's your host, Mario Cantone. Hello and welcome to the 35th Annual Lucille Lortel Awards. I'm your host for this evening. I'm Mario Cantone. Oh, off-Broadway, so innovative, so experimental, so daring, so brave. And this is brave of me to be sitting in the middle of my apartment in front of Venetian blinds. I'm not going anywhere. None of us are really going anywhere until there's a vaccine. You know, if I was a kid, if I was like 20, 30, I'd be like, all right, I can handle this. A couple of years, I'm going to lose a year and a half, maybe. I'm okay. Then you get in your 40s. Well, that's not too bad. Your 50s, eh, I'm 60. I have to lose a year and a half, two years at 60 years old? What the? I'm just happy to be doing this. I did this live a few years back and I'm happy that they asked me to do this virtually so I can just bomb in front of the Venetian blinds. It's great. Um, of course, we are benefiting the Actors Fund as we do every year. And tonight, obviously, it's even more dire and more important. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. We're celebrating Off-Broadway's best. We really are in a living room in New York City with a ring light in front of me and a little bit of powder. That's about it. 60. And we had an incredible Off-Broadway season. We really did. We had uh, 101 eligible productions, 55 plays, 19 musicals, 19 revivals, and eight solo shows, which I did a solo show. It's exhausting. So let's take a look back at the 2019-2020 off-Broadway season in a collage of clips. Really, it's just 2019 because nothing really happened in 2020, so.
All right. Wasn't that scintillating? I thought it was. Boy, that just flew by. That 2019 off-Broadway season flew by. Um, let's get on with the show. Let's move this along because we've got some booze, porn, and dope to get back to. Um, presenting the outstanding featured actor in a musical are two of Broadway and off-Broadway's power couple. I love them both, especially the male, because I know him very well. And um, we call each other. I make him sing for me. And and he requests comedy bits, which he might do tonight because he's always requesting something. But he's going to have to pay up in some nudes. Send them. Send them, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pasquale and Philip Asu. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Lucille Lortel Awards. By far the coolest awards night of the year. Um, and we're not biased at all. No, no, not at all. We are both actors who have worked off-Broadway and in the off-Broadway community, and we are so proud and happy to be here today to announce one of our winners. And tonight we are doing all of this in honor of the Actors Fund, which is an incredible organization. So if you have the means and you feel you can donate, please go to theactorsfund.org slash Lortel. Okay. On to the good stuff. Our category is... Nominees for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Musical are... Christian Borle, Little Shop of Horrors. Alex Gibson, Octet. Gus Halper, Sing Street. Jay Armstrong Johnson, Scotland, PA. John Andrew Morrison, a Strange Loop. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes, goes to... to... It's a tie. Christian Borle, Little Shop of Horrors. John Andrew Morrison, A Strange Loop. Hi, John Andrew Morrison here, and thank you so much for giving me a Lucille Lortel Award. I'm thrilled. I'm so grateful to Michael R. Jackson for those incredible words and music and to Stephen Brackett and Raja Feather Kelly and the entire cast and crew and everyone at Playwrights Horizons and Page 73, Barbara Whitman and the entire musical theater factory community and to all the audiences that came and loved our show. And personally, I want to thank my family and friends um, and let them know how grateful I am for all of their support through so many years of making this career happen. Also, congratulations to fellow winner Christian Borle. Uh, they always say if you're going to tie, the only and best way to do this is to tie with Christian Borle. Um, I was struck yesterday as a ceremony happened and awards started to roll out that folks from other shows are congratulating and celebrating each other. And I was also moved to send out high fives and congrats and cheers to other companies and performers and directors and on and on. My phone buzzed all night from fellow actors and directors and producers and musicians and administrators and more from this, my beloved community. And this is why the Actors Fund is so vital and necessary, and I urge you to support them with a donation. This organization supports my entire community in so many ways. This is a moment of celebration, yes, but also, too, our community is suffering greatly. Members of our beloved community have died from this disease. Members of our community are very sick right now. We also have folks who are thankfully getting better. We all face uncertain career prospects and financial times, and our emotional and physical health are being tested greatly. And the place we can turn to for guidance, solution, and support is the Actors Fund. Um, I have personally benefited from the Actors Fund. I've been an active member of the Career Center, getting skills training and job search and entrepreneurial skills from them. Um, thanks, Christopher Bloodworth and Alexandra Bellavan and Calliope and Rita and all of the Career Center team um, when I've needed assistance to obtain health insurance and run into dire financial times. Keith Tremontano and Vinnie Mussolino came to my aid and held my hand and walked me through some challenging times. Times. I'll also sneak in a plug for the Episcopal Actors Guild here, which I was led to f by the Actors Fund. The, the Actors Fund led me to the Episcopal Actors Guild because the Actors Fund isn't only a fantastic organization in itself, 
but they also work in community with other organizations to allow our community to work and live with dignity. The Actors Fund is working overtime right now to support and aid the entire performing arts community during this bizarre time, and I urge you to give whatever you can. Those who know, know that the Actors Fund isn't just for actors, it's for everyone who makes a career and life in theater, film, TV, dance, opera, on stage, backstage, casting, producing, and administrated offices, you name it. Um, so again, Thank you, thank you, thank you for this award. I am thrilled to bits about this. Um, and if you'd like to show me some love, the best and most important way to do this right now, right now, is to give to the Actors Fund. So thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Congratulations, all. Have an incredible night. Mario, please do the bit about the cutlet. And don't forget. I don't know what that it's means. It's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> oh, Stephen, I knew you'd make a request. You're not getting it. Send the pictures. All right, the, the cutlet bit. It's so old. Uh, I can't believe you remember that. Well, I know why you remember it, because it was about my brother's porn star girlfriend. That's why you remember it. You're not kidding me. Um, yeah, and she was a Southern girl, and she came over, and I made chicken cutlets. And she said to me, these are delicious chicken cutlets. She was like, va, va, boom, you know. Chicken cutlets, they're delicious. I love, I never had these before. Chicken cutlets, you know, they're like chicken, only flat. To present the nominees for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Musical is the very talented and beautiful and quite incredible, Alison Pill. Hi, I'm Alison Pill, and I'm so honored to be joining you tonight for the Lucille Lortel Awards, celebrating the best in Off-Broadway and also celebrating the amazing work that the Actors Fund does to support us. These are unprecedented, chaotic, crazy times, and I'm joining you from home when I should be with you in a theater somewhere. Um, but I still wanna celebrate the work that all of Off-Broadway does and will continue to do after all this is over. So without further ado, the nominees for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Musical are Ashley Perez Flanagan in The Green, Ari Groover, Little Shop of Horrors, L. Morgan Lee, A Strange Loop, Ciara Renee, The Wrong Man, Kuhu Verma, Octet. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Kuhu Verma, Octet. Hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone that tuned in to watch the Lucille Lortel Awards last night. I know I had such an amazing time watching and celebrating my friends and my peers and so many of my mentors and inspirations um, be celebrated throughout the night. I think it's really surreal to feel moments of joy, but so needed to hold a space together, even just digitally, and find that gratitude. So thank you. Um, I also found that I really had to actually take time to accept the award because so many people lie behind the award that are not me, and I feel like credit should be given where credit is due. And I want to start off by thanking Annie and Dave for trusting me with this part. I love Velma so deeply and she has taught me so much and she came in a time in my life that I really, really needed her. So thank you for gifting me to her, gifting her to me. Thank you for gifting her to me. Um, thank you to the cast of Octet, the understudies, you're all my family, um, to Orr and to Simone, to Signature, for the audiences that we had, for my friends and family, everyone that knew that it gets worse before it gets better, as with most things, and as it was with me when I was finding Velma. Thank you for standing by me in my worse and helping me get to my better. Um, I have so many mentors that throughout the years have just put their trust in me and and believed that I was gonna blossom into something and saw that potential in me. And I have to thank you for upholding that, that value in Off-Broadway because I feel like Off-Broadway is such a playpen for developing young, young minds. And I think that's what's going to elevate theater. So thank you. Thank you so much. Lastly, 
I want to acknowledge that I stand on the shoulders of many people of color that came before me that fought and fought and fought to make their way into this industry as with most industries. And I thank them for opening those doors for me to be able to stand here and say what I'm saying. And I cannot wait for the rest of my life to work and work and fight and fight to then become the shoulders for the next generation of queer brown women. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for this incredible honor and um, stay safe. Congratulations to all of the nominees and to our wonderful recipient. I cannot wait to be in a theater somewhere with you, enjoying some more of your work soon. Thank you. Don't forget to join us at hashtag Lortel Awards. Hi everyone, this is Brian Stokes Mitchell, chairman of the Actors Fund. I hope you and yours are safe and well. I am honored to share this message with every virtual body at the 2020 Lucille Lortel Awards. Congratulations to tonight's honorees and nominees and special thanks to the Lucille Lortel Foundation for their generous ongoing support of the fund and our services to the community. As you may know, the Actors Fund has been helping everyone in the performing arts and entertainment community for more than 130 years. And in this time of uncertainty, we're still here to serve everyone in film, theater, television, music, opera, radio, dance, dot, dot, dot. The fund continues to offer emergency financial assistance just as it has always done. Now, by providing help for those in crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In a normal year, we would provide upwards of $2 million in emergency grants. By June of this year, we will have provided more than $20 million in emergency grants. This will go toward assistance for rent, helping people maintain health insurance, food, and essential medications. To find out what other services are available, you can visit actorsfund.org. Tonight, as we celebrate the off-Broadway community together virtually, remember that the fund remains here for actors, writers, directors, musicians, dancers, crew members, stage managers, grips, gaffers, editors, camera people, and so many more in our entertainment community. It's critical that we be there for those in need, in particular our seniors and the immunocompromised individuals who need our help, as well as those in financial distress. If you are interested in learning more or donating, please visit actorsfund.org forward slash Lortel. Congratulations once again to all the nominees, honorees, and recipients and we will get through this together. Thank you, Brian Stokes Mitchell, who I adore and who is singing out the window in the middle of the Upper West Side to his neighbors. I mean, how'd you like to live next door to him? I would. Um, thank you for that. Um, all the beautiful things you said about the Actors Fund, they are so important and thank God they exist. And uh, tonight is, uh, is all about them. And it's all about me too. Let's get back to me. All right. Um, Next up is Outstanding Scenic Design. It will be presented by a young man who's a song and dance man. He's like a throwback, this kid. He's terrific. He's talented. He can sing. I loved him on Dancing with the Stars. Ah, he was incredible. I don't even know if he won or lost. He probably lost because he was the better one. They usually go that way. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Fisher. Hi, everyone. Jordan Fisher here. I am so excited to be a part of the Lortel Awards. As a longtime member of this beautiful community that we call the theater, I am proud to help represent this particular industry of service. To give and share electric and unique moments night after night is an absolute joy. However, in this odd and challenging time, a lot of our friends are struggling. Not knowing where the next paycheck or even meal will come from is a lot of artists' bleak reality. Now, the Actors Fund is a beautiful organization that is helping in many ways. So tonight, as we are raising awareness towards this challenging season of all of our lives, I encourage you to visit actorsfund.org forward slash Lortel and give however you can. 
Now, without further ado, the nominees for Outstanding Scenic Design are Yoshin Chen and Laura Jelinek, Mrs. Murray's Menagerie. Yu Shen Chen, our dear dead drug lord. Tim McAvee, Seared. James Noon, London Assurance. Clint Ramos, Soft Power. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Yoshin Chen and Laura Jelinek, Mrs. Murray's Menagerie. It is such a amazing surprise during this crazy pandemic time. Uh, thanks so much to everyone in Lucille Lotel Awards and Off Broadway League who made this year's ceremony possible. I didn't think that we would win the awards, so I was glad that I had a little time to research how to write an acceptance speech. Um, theater is a collaborative art form and we simply couldn't have achieved it without everyone in this production. Uh, thank you, Laura. I always feel so lucky that I got to collaborate with you closely and inhale all of those wisdoms. Um, thank you, our fearless uh, director, Lila, and Mrs. Marie's Menagerie creators, the Mad Ones and Ensemble. Thanks to the entire creative team and stage management. It was really um, a special and inspiring process for me that I found myself constantly learning and finding truth together with you all. Special thanks to our prop designers, Emmy Finkel and Noah Mies, who helped us to bring this space to life. Thanks to everyone in Ars Nova who provided us with their full support. Shout out to the production managers, Jason Kreese and technical director, Kat. Um, the challenge of the design was that set was responding to the history of the space, the architecture of the theater. So oftentimes it feel more like interior renovation project. It was the care that made this design possible from a half inch model into a full scale environment in front of all our audience. Thanks to my family and my friends in Taiwan and in the US. Um, thank you for cheering for me and you are all inspiration and my strength. Thank you, my thanks to my husband, Jeremy, um, with his love and understanding, who also generously let me take over the living room um, as a design studio. Um, it has been a difficult time for our theater community, um, but I believe that theater is all about human connection and our need that to connect with one another and our attempt to examine the truth and explore different worlds. It is resilient. I wanted to share some of my um, intentions that I set recently as a reminder to myself during this time. Stay open and stay curious. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Wash your hands and wear a mask when you're outside. And I hope to see you all in the theater very soon. Congrats to all of the nominees. I look forward to all of us joining together in person next year. Have a beautiful night. Hi. I'm Jackie Hoffman, Broadway veteran and clothes horse, and I'm honored to present the award for Outstanding Costume Design. And because I am presenting that award, I am wearing something really outstanding on my bottom half. Uh, it's Prada. Yeah, that's what it is. The nominees for Outstanding Costume Design are... Didi Ayate, Blacks. Montana Levi Blanco, A Strange Loop. Juana Botez, In the Green. Tony Leslie James, For Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough. Rachel Townsend and Jessica John, The Confession of Lily Dare. And the Lucille Lord Tell Award goes to... It's a tie. Tony Leslie James for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Rachel Townsend and Jessica John, the confession of Lily Dare. Thank you, Lord Tail Committee and the Off-Broadway League for the best costume design award for, for colored girls. I'd like to thank my associate designer, Dominique Fawn Hill, the costume shop, all my fellow design colleagues and the public theater for the opportunity. It was a great honor to, to be able to work on this production of Ntozaki's Revival. Thank you again. I'm eternally grateful. I'm proud to be a member of the Off-Broadway League and of the Off-Broadway community. Thank you. 
Hello, I'd like to give a special thanks to Jessica, John, Charles, and Carl for bringing me onto this wonderful fun show with such a great cast, team, and crew. I'd also like to thank Steven and the TDF Costume Collection for being such an important resource because we really couldn't have done this show without their help. And thank you to our associate Megan Mills, the incredible cast, Rodney Gordon, Timberlake Studios, Mo, and Primary Stages. I'd also like to thank the Off-Broadway League and Lertel Foundation. This is really an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the honor of this award. I'm flattered. I wouldn't have been able to do it without Rachel. So thanks, Rachel, for being a great colleague. It was a great opportunity to get to work on this with you. Um, thanks also, Charles and Carl. You guys always provide such amazing projects to work on, and I'm grateful to be able to get to work with you frequently. So thank you. Thanks to the cast as well. You guys are all amazing. Um, we wouldn't have been able to do this without Megan Mills, our associate. She did a fantastic job. Um, and of course, we need to thank Steven at the Costume Collection, along with Sarah Timberlake at Timberlake Studios, and Lisa Marzoff. Um, your work on this project uh, is so appreciated and doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope all of you have a wonderful night. Please stay safe. Bye. Thank you to all our nominees. And remember the Actors Fund, because now more than ever, we're all going to be online for those people. And don't cut in front of me. You look good, though, Jackie Hoffman. Pretty good, huh, for being indoors for two months, huh? Look at us. Look at us. Defying age. Jackie and I had a lovely car ride home from a gig one night. We just laughed and complained and complained and laughed and complained. Next up is the outstanding featured actor in a play. And tonight, this year in 2019, it will be presented by Tatiana Maslany. Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana Maslany. Uh, I am so honored to be presenting today. Um, I had the wonderful fortune of doing my first off-Broadway play a couple of years back. I'm from Canada, uh, from a small town called Regina, Saskatchewan, and uh, grew up doing community theater and always revered New York and off-Broadway as the pinnacle. So I got to do um, Tracy Letts' play, Mary Page Marlowe, at the second stage, and it was easily one of the highlights of my career and my life. Um, working with Tracy, who I'd been a fan of since I was, you know, since I'd first seen August Osage, uh, which was the very first play I ever saw in New York. Um, getting to work with Lila Neugebauer and Blair Brown, it was just an absolute dream come true uh, for me. And uh, so I'm very honored to be here presenting today the nominees for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Play. Christopher Borg, The Confession of Lily Dare. Mark Bovino, Mrs. Murray's Menagerie. Garcia, Continuity. Francis Jew, Cambodian Rock Band. Ken Narasaki, Greater Clements. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Francis Jew, Cambodian Rock Band. Okay. Lucille Lortel Awards, Off Broadway League. What are you thinking? There are people who grow up knowing that they are destined to live on the stage. And then there are people like me who suspect that they're always just a moment away from being found out. Um, my insecurities, however, are dwarfed by my absolute faith that what we do matters. That theater makes a difference, artists, help to reveal and change lives. And this last season off Broadway is a fantastic example of just how groundbreaking and inclusive theater can be, um, showing us who we are and what we can be. Um, it seems really, really piggy to be getting any kind of acknowledgement when I already had the great good fortune to work with heroes of mine like Lauren Yi and Che Yu and the gutsy company of Cambodian rock band, as well as other heroes of mine like David Henry Huang and uh, Janine Tesori and Lee Silverman and Sam Pinkleton and the glorious company of Soft Power. Um, 
thank, thank you so much to all of them, to the Signature Theater, to the Public Theater, for making art that matters and for insisting that artists like me take up space. We will get together again and we will continue to make art, make love, and make hope. Now, I'm going to go log on to actressfund.org forward slash Lortel and make a donation. I hope you do too. Love you. Massive congratulations to all the nominees and uh, we really want to support our actors at this difficult time. And if there's any way that you can donate, please go to actorsfund.org backslash Lortel. Thank you so much. What's up everybody, Jelani Aladdin here. Um, thank you so much to the Lucille Lortel Awards for having me tonight. Um, as you know, every year the Lucille Lortel Awards is to help raise money for the Actors Fund. And most recently, I encountered the Actors Fund's help when I had a fire in my apartment. Um, and actually it was the Actors Fund that I called first and they were able to point me in the right direction to seek help. And they even offered me an emergency assistance fund. That's how much they care. So please, if you can, donate to www.actorsfund.org backslash Lortel. Um, anything, anything will help. Now, without further ado, the nominees for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Play are... Okwi Okpukwasili, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Estelle Parsons, A Bright Room Called Day. Michelle Pock, Heroes of the Fourth Turning. Stephanie Wright Thompson, Mrs. Murray's Menagerie. Alexandria Wales, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. And the Lucy Lortel Award goes to Michelle Pock, Heroes of the Fourth Turning. I would like to thank the Lucy Lortel Foundation for this incredible honor. Truly, it means a lot to me. Um, I want to thank a couple of other people, if I may, just a couple. Uh, I want to start with Playwrights Horizons and Tim and Adam for their bravery in producing this play, to at, for Will Arbery for his genius and artistry and, and kindness. Thank you to Donya Tamor for leading and nurturing us and encouraging us to be fearless in our performances and to the dream team of actors. Jeb, John, Julia, and Zoe, I love you all. We made something beautiful and it was a pleasure to share that time with you guys. I love you all. Um, I would like to thank Richard Fisher at A3 Artists Agency and, um, and my two men, John and Jack Dossett. Boys. Thank you again to the foundation. I'm really, really grateful. Yeah, man. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hit the pole. Hit the pole. Congrats again to all the fantastic nominees. This was an amazing year of theater, and I trust you, and I tell you that theater will be coming back. It may take some time, but we'll be back. And so all of you, continue to have a great night. Good evening, my name is Terry Byrne and I'm the president of the Off-Broadway League. On behalf of the League, we're so pleased that you could join us to celebrate another season of excellence Off-Broadway. As it always has, this evening our event will benefit the Actors Fund. We are particularly proud of that long tradition, of our connection with the Actors Fund, as they're doing tremendous work at this moment in time. Theater is, at its core, about connection. The human heart craves connection. Now, for each of us in our own cocoon, it is the connection with our collaborators and our colleagues, but especially with our audiences, that we miss the most. So our celebration this evening is dedicated to those audiences who have connected with us over the years, who have found us amidst the myriad entertainment choices they have, because they've discovered that live theater is like no other form of entertainment. And the intimacy that is found between performers and audiences in an off-Broadway theater 
is as uncommon and powerful a connection as you're likely to find. As we wait to emerge, we appreciate this opportunity to engage with our audiences. On behalf of the Off-Broadway League's Board of Directors, I would like to thank our friend Mario Cantone for hosting this event, along with all the presenters who generously gave of their time. Thank you to our devoted director, Michael Heitzman, who has been Zooming along with us for more than a decade. Our thanks to the Lortel Administration Committee, who had to significantly pivot in their planning in order to present this event, and to the nominating committee, who attended 101 eligible shows this season. We also thank Victoria Bailey and the Theatre Development Fund for their ongoing generous funding for these awards. And the awards would not be possible without the support of our producing partner, the Lucille Lortel Theatre Foundation. Executive Director George Forbes, the Lortel staff, especially Jeffrey Schubart and Nancy Hurwitz. We deeply value their dedication to these awards. And may I join in saluting the nominees, our treasured honorees, and once more, our audiences. We so look forward to connecting with you again. Good night. Don't forget to join us at hashtag Lord Tell Awards. Well, this is a coincidence because just the, the person before the last one was Jelani Aladdin, who played not Aladdin. He played Hercules in the Disney Hercules that was in the park, which I saw, which was very, very good. I loved it. The mix of community theater and professionals working together in tandem was fantastic. You could tell the difference once in a while, but it was unbelievable. Next up was his leading lady who played Meg. She was wonderful. She's quite funny and an incredible singer. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the award for Outstanding Sound Design is Krista Rodriguez. Hi, I'm Krista Rodriguez, and I'm so honored to be here at this virtual presentation. Um, I just did my own off-Broadway show last year with nominee Raul Esparza called Seared at MCC, and it was a wonderful experience. Uh, on top of that, I am so privileged to be raising money for the Actors Fund, which is an organization that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, about six years ago, my whole world was turned upside down when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I didn't even know that I needed help because you can never really imagine what's going to happen, how long you'll be out of work, how long um, you will need to recover. There's so many unknowns. And at the urging of a dear friend, they told me to go to the Actors Fund and the Actors Fund supported me financially through the entire time I was going through my, my um, cancer journey. And what was so special about it was that I had, I had given the speech twice a year and asked money from people and didn't know even then that the money, it's not going off to the ether, it's not going to people that we never see the results, it's going directly to us, it's going directly to the community that needs the help when they need it and how they need it. And it's a very special organization and I am so happy to be here today supporting them. And the nominees for Outstanding Sound Design are... Justin Ellington, Heroes of the Fourth Turning, Mikkel Fixel, Dana H. Lee Kinney and Sanaa Yamada, Is This a Room? Hidenori Nakajo, Octet. Nicholas Pope, In the Green. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Mikhail Fixel, Dana H. I would like to thank our playwright, Lucas Nave, for trusting me with his deeply personal story and his mother for literally trusting me with her words. I'd like to thank Tanya Palmer, our dramaturg, for inviting me to join this project so many years ago and the staff of the Goodman Theatre, Center Theatre Group and the Vineyard for continuing to support the growth of this piece over the years. Much gratitude to Les Waters and Didi O'Connell and all the stage management and the production teams and all the designers of this piece. Um, for their 
collaboration and generosity and patience and never make me feel bad for them having to wait on sound, which happened quite a lot in this project. Endless, endless gratitude to my awesome associate, Valentine Manfuga, who was a constant lifesaver and a true collaborator. And finally, sincerest thanks to um, the Off-Broadway League and the Lucille Lortel Theater Foundation for uh, this honor and for making this possible despite the circumstances and uh, for giving me a chance to finally do an acceptance speech in person. Thank you very much. Congratulations to all the nominees and don't forget to donate actorsfund.org backslash Lortel. Hello, my name is Niambi Niambi of The Good Fight on CBS All Access. I am so honored to be here to present an award for the Lucille Lortel. Uh, my experience off Broadway has been such a, a joy um, being on that stage, getting the opportunity to play the Prince of Morocco in a production with Al Pacino uh, in Shakespeare in the Park and playing Caliban in The Tempest opposite Mandy Patinkin. And without further ado, the nominees for uh, Outstanding Lighting Design. Isabella Bird, Heroes of the Fourth Turning. Alan C. Edwards, Fires in the Mirror. Tyler Michelow, Socrates. Barbara Samuels, In the Green. Jen Schriever, Power Strip. And the Lucia Lortel Award goes to Isabella Bird, Heroes of the Fourth Turning. Hello. Um, thank you so much. It's so strange celebrating alone. Um, this play shook me in brand new ways, and I'm so glad that it's being celebrated for its grace and terror. And um, Will, thank you so much for writing so beautifully and trusting me with this darkness. Danya Tamor, you are an enormous leader. You lead with heartfelt rigor, and thank you so much for pushing me. Um, Laura Jelinek, you are a master crafter of space. Thank you so much for making this carefully considered darkness with me. Um, Serafina and Justin, your textures and edges were essential to this world. Thank you. This cast was just the most enormous, giving, listening group of artists. Thank you so much for playing in my darkness. Um, Playwrights Horizons, and my team, Cheyenne Sykes, Carson Gross, George Kilty, my very loving family, um, my dear friends, and uh, to, to the audiences who I didn't know I was going to miss so much. Um, I cannot wait to sit in a dark room with you all very soon. Thank you. Congratulations to all the nominees. Um, and if you get a chance, please give back. Uh, the theater is super important. You can go to theactorsfund.org backslash Lortel uh, to give. Uh, and thank you. See you next year. Hey, I'm Lauren Patton from Broadway's Jagged Little Pill. I'm so excited to be a presenter at this year's Lucille Lortel Awards, albeit virtually. Um, I love the off-Broadway community. One of my most meaningful and fulfilling artistic experiences was with Sarah Delap's The Wolves, which was off Broadway with the Playwrights Realm in 2016. And that changed my life, that changed my relationship to New York theater. So to give back in a small way means a lot. So let's get to it. The nominees for Outstanding Projection Design are Stefan Mazurek, Mojada, Lisa Renko, and Possible, Emoji Land, the musical. Rayhorn Sun, The Headlands. Hannah Wasileski, Anatomy of a Suicide. Hannah Wasileski, Fires in the Mirror. And the Lucia Lortel Award goes to Rayhorn Sun, The Headlands. Hi. My name is Rayhorn Sun. Thank you for the award. The Headlands is a truly special production and deserves the attention. Thank you, LCD3 and Evan, for finding all of us and never stop trusting our vision. 
Chris Chan and Canoe Adams. Thank you for your restless creativity. Our three-day San Francisco video shoot was the most memorable trip and became the foundation of the production. Thanks to the incredible cast, I've learned so much from you. Can't wait to celebrate in person with you all. Thanks to my wife, Debbie, the smartest person I know on earth. Your love inspires me and carries me when I'm lost. Thanks to my son and Huang family. Keep on drinking, shouting, and loving forever. Thanks to the Rockstar creative team, Kimie, Peter, Mark, Tilly, and Josh. Miss our pre-show cocktails at Chris's apartment. Love to my video folks in Taiwan and the tech team at Lincoln Center Theater, especially Jordy and Kevin. Couldn't make it without your 100% positive thinking. Thank you, Lucille Lortel Awards. It is such a great honor and a huge encouragement to keep me going under this dark time. As Projection Design Award presenter Laura Patton said, it will forever change my relationship to New York theater. Thank you, thank you. Please stay safe and well. Bye-bye. Congratulations to all the recipients and nominees for this year's Lortel Awards. Like I said, I'm so grateful to be here. And I love that this is supporting the Actors Fund. We need the Actors Fund now more than ever. It is providing life-saving care, life-saving support during these unbelievably difficult times. So if you can, please go to actorsfund.org backslash or tell. Thank you, Lauren Patton. I saw the jagged little pill and you blew the roof off that place when you sang that song standing there with your hands in your pocket and this sound hitting the back of the wall. We had some jagged little cracks in the wall after you sang that thing. All right, next up is my friend who I adore and love. Uh, this is a man that I met in 1995 officially when I replaced him in Love, Valor, Compassion. Thankfully, I got his blessing. He became my friend forever. Um, and he is one of the greatest talents in the American theater and in film and in television. I love him. I adore him. And he's here to, um, you'll see what he's here to do. But I love you, Nathan. Nathan Lane, everybody. Good evening. I'm Nathan Lane. Each year, we pay tribute to artists from the off-Broadway community who passed away during this season. Among the greats we've lost were two of my dearest friends, Terrence McNally and Brian Dennehy. Brian was a friend for over 30 years, one of Hollywood's favorite character actors and a towering presence in the theater for anyone who saw his legendary collaborations with Robert Falls in Chicago, culminating in his magnificent portrayal of Willie Loman in their 1999 revival of Death of a Salesman on Broadway. I will never forget what a loving and supportive mentor he was to me during our own collaboration on The Iceman Cometh. Terrence McNally was a giant in the American theater, a groundbreaking force who was an early champion of mine and gave me some of the best and most important roles of my career, a unique collaboration that spanned 30 years and for which I will be forever grateful. It's hard to imagine the world without these two brilliant artists, but they leave behind incredible legacies that will never be forgotten. I know I will not be alone in missing them and certainly not alone in honoring them and the many others whose talent and artistry made everlasting contributions to Off-Broadway and beyond. Said I'm off, I know I won't be back anytime soon. She made a boat of pillows on the duvet seat. She said, Say. i 
still be your little girl I'm all in grey She sits alone on a sofa in the sun And wonders where her enough it all did go A little girl had made her own so many plans They weren't to be So life goes on Thank you, Nathan, and thank you to the Lucille Lortel Foundation for putting together a beautiful in memoriam clip. Next up is someone who is incredibly funny. Uh, she's a brilliant comedian, a brilliant actress. She is the star of Fleabag. She is multi award winning. Uh, I can't even count how many awards she's won or name them. Ladies and gentlemen, Phoebe Waller Bridge. Hello, my name is Phoebe Waller-Bridge and last spring I had the unique joy of performing off-Broadway in New York my solo play Fleabag. The Soho Playhouse and Lucille Lortel Awards welcomed our show with such warmth and enthusiasm the whole experience still feels like a dream. Sounds corny, but it's true. I'm honoured to be here announcing this year's winner for Outstanding Solo Show. It's not easy performing a one-person show, you can't take a break. You have no one to cover you if you forget your lines. And worst of all, you get all the applause and you get all the attention afterwards. It's exhausting. So without further ado, the nominees are... Bella Bella. Dana H. The Way She Spoke. We're Only Alive for a Short Amount of Time. Where We Stand. And the Lucille Lotel Award goes to Dana H. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
Calling Dana H. a solo show is kind of like calling John Glenn's trip to outer space a solo flight. With a group of people in the Dana H. mission control, I sometimes think a monkey could do what I did, but I'm so glad that they chose a human for this particular mission. Um, thank you, Sarah and Doug, for creating such a beautiful place to work, the Vineyard Theater. Thank you, CTG and the Goodman, our two other great homes. Um, thank you, Sasha. Why I'm imaging Valentine, Jesse, Riley, Clarissa, and Maggie for strapping me in and keeping me safe every night. Andrew, Janice, Paul, geniuses, everyone, for making this perfect thrill ride. There are no words to thank Misha and Steve enough. And there's not even a, a, a gesture or a sound to thank Les enough. But the real geniuses of this thing are the great playwright Lucas Nathan and his mother, Dana Higginbottom. Um, it's almost impossible to truly see another person, let alone our parents. And he would never say this, but I think that Lucas instinctively made for himself this particular task that required so much unblinking regard of another human being that the work of constructing it would become an act of love. And the crazy rigor of performing it could become an act of empathy. What an honor to participate in the unflinching work of seeing another person that Lucas set out for himself. He has inherited his mother's smarts, her fearlessness, um, and also her sense of the theatrical and her attraction to the edges of things. I have been so blessed to hover between these two remarkable people. And thank you to New York City, where the feeling of performing this was like nothing else. There was strangely a visceral pleasure in the air, even though our play is very dark, and an openness and a willingness to go into the unknown with us that is very particular to this wicked, wonderful city. I can't wait to get to wake up and be together again. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Off-Broadway League and the Lortel Foundation for this honor. Uh, I want to echo the thanks to the names that Dee Dee already mentioned, but I also want to thank Dee Dee herself. Uh, she likes to say that uh, a monkey could have done this, but we all know that that's not true. I can't imagine doing this play without her, and she's an extricably part of the DNA of the piece. Uh, thank you to Les, my longtime friend and collaborator, for taking the steering wheel on this drive into the underworld. Thank you to our entire design team, but especially to Misha, our uh, genius sound designer, with whom we work to make the audio track for the play. Thank you to the theaters who nurtured and uh, uh, championed this play, uh, Center Theater Group, The Goodman, and The Vineyard Theater. And uh, three final special thank yous, one to Tanya Palmer, who is my dramaturg on this piece from the beginning, and a thank you to the extraordinary and compassionate Steve Cawson, who originally commissioned the play with the civilians and conducted the interviews on which the piece is based. Um, the play wouldn't exist without Steve. And lastly, of course, uh, to my mother, Dana Higginbotham. Uh, the, this honor is as much for her as it is anybody else. And um, anything that I'm able to do uh, is a direct result of either something she taught me or introduced me to, or as the result of some sacrifice she made for me. So thank you. Congratulations to everyone. And just to remind you, this is a benefit for the Actors Fund. If you would like to donate to people in the theatre community who are in need at this difficult time, please visit actorsfund.org backslash Lotel. Thank you, Phoebe. And congratulations to all the Solo Show Award winners and losers. Believe me, I know, because I was a solo award loser. Um, anyway, next up is a woman that is one of the great producers of the theater. Uh, Off-Broadway, on-Broadway, she's, she's a legend, and she's a, an incredible woman. She's won four Lucille Lortel Awards. She's been nominated for an additional six, and she won the Lucille Lortel Lifetime Achievement Award. 
ladies and gentlemen, a friend to all of us, the great Daryl Roth. Anna DeVere Smith, playwright, actor, activist, teacher, mentor, and friend. She is celebrated as a true pioneer for her groundbreaking theater technique, combining journalistic interviews with dramatic performance. By shedding light on society through her use of varied perspectives, Anna first came to national attention exploring the Crown Heights riots in her incredibly powerful piece, Fires in the Mirror. Applying this intersection of current events and art, she next confronted the LA riots that erupted after the Rodney King beatings through her amazing Twilight LA 1992. It was then that I first met Anna when asked to produce the play as it transferred to Broadway. Our lasting friendship was extended to include my family, all of whom adore her and who have benefited from her wisdom, intelligence, and kindness. Over the years, Anna's work has examined major issues of the human condition, the American presidency in her play, House Arrest, identity, healthcare, themes of life and death, including the Katrina hurricane in Let Me Down Easy, the brilliant notes from the field in which Anna brought her searing insight to youth, poverty, and the criminal justice system, and growing out of that, the Pipeline Project, where she uses the play to extend that conversation beyond theater. Anna's theater is always a very special blend of activism, advocacy, and art, compelling us to be more engaged and aware of the world around us, ultimately inspiring us to action. She sees teaching as a cornerstone of her work and is the founding director of the Institute on Arts and Civic Dialogue at NYU, where she is a university professor at the Tisch School of the Arts. Her accolades are numerous. Among the many, she's a former MacArthur Fellow, a trustee of the Modern Museum of Art. She was named the Jefferson Lecturer, the nation's highest honor in the humanities. And she was honored with the National Endowment for the Humanities Medal by President Obama. But we're here today, virtually connected, in these unprecedented times to honor Anna as a playwright. Her work has inspired and influenced generations of theater artists and theater lovers. At the heart of Anna's writing is community, truth telling, the uncanny ability to transform herself while transforming us. The uncanny ability to transform herself while transforming us finding the best in humanity during the worst of times. It is so very significant to be celebrating her at this particular moment as we try to make sense and find meaning in the uncertain world around us. 30 years ago, Lucille Lortel was the first woman who encouraged me to follow my dreams and seek out those artists whose work I felt passionate about producing. So coming full circle, on behalf of the Lucille Lortel Foundation, I am very happy to present Anna DeVere Smith with this wonderful award as she is inducted into the Playwrights Sidewalk, where she will take her place alongside so many other theater greats. I have no doubt that Anna will be there helping to light the way as we rebuild in the months and years ahead, using her wisdom, her empathy, her insight, to create new narratives from our collective stories. So the Playwright Sidewalk is a living and breathing part of our city and our theater community. We look forward to being able to walk down Christopher Street, gather in front of the Lortel Theater, and celebrate Anna's name emblazoned there for all to see. Anna, we thank you for using your passion for people, your passion for ideas, justice, and language to broaden and enrich our lives. Congratulations and all my love on this well-deserved honor. Daryl, thank you so much. Just like Lucille Lortel, you are a crucial and critical part of the American theater. Thank you for everything you've done for me. And thank you to the Lucille Lortel Foundation for putting me on the walk. I kind of can't believe it. Uh, to be there with people who I admire and have admired, 
And thank you for your support of my work over time. Three other times the Lucille Lortel Foundation has recognized my work. And before I go any further, I wanna make a shout out to Sahim Ali, Michael Benjamin Washington and Paige Evans for their production of Fires in the Mirror which is right now being nominated by Lucille Lortel for Best Revival. But I really wanna focus my remarks today on this particular moment, the moment of COVID-19. I know that so many institutions, theaters, schools, hospitals, museums, symphonies, it goes on and on, are in a stage of just what to do, what are we gonna do about this unfathomable moment and so I say to you, rest, restore, think new. To the younger people coming along who are just starting their careers, like my students at NYU, I want you to think about the fact that in 1947, Lucille Lortel started the White Barn Theater with the idea of having work that was unusual and experimental. And I think in this time when we're worried about everything we're gonna lose, that we didn't always have the regional theater, we didn't always have the off-Broadway theater, we didn't always have so much of what we have now. So this is also a time to do the unfathomable, to do the unusual, to do the experimental. And so I say, steady on, go forth. Oh, how much do I love Anna Devere Smith? You have no idea, I adore her. I've never met her. Maybe I could invite her over. Oh, wait, I can't. I'm in isolation. The nominees for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Musical will be presented by a power couple. I know them both. They're good friends. I love them. They're a hot couple, too. One was incredible in Groundhog's Day. And my favorite, Rocky. That's right. I saw it five times. I don't really give a shit what you thought about it. And the wonderful wife of his, who was in many things, but I loved her in Legally Blonde, where she did the bend and snap. Ladies and gentlemen, Orfe and Andy Carl. Hey everyone, it's Orfe. And Andy Carl. And uh, we're so happy to be here tonight. You know, Off-Broadway has always been such a wonderful place for us, and some of our favorite performances and shows that we've gotten to do. Yeah, I mean, I loved Broadway. you in Love, Janice, and I loved you in Trailer Park. I had a great time in Altar Boys and Sondheim Saturday Night and Slut the Musical. That was my favorite. That's thing. a lot of off Yeah, well, it was. So we're, we're always appreciative to uh, be here and uh, always uh, appreciative of Off-Broadway. Uh, we also appreciate the, the Actors, Actors Fund. Fund. Yes. Tonight we're giving, uh, we're celebrating them and we're also asking that you give as much as you can. Or as little as you can, a That's dollar right. even counts. You're helping out so many people in need. Uh, just go to actorsfund.org backslash Lortel and give what you can. Without further ado, the nominees for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Musical are... Jonathan Groff, Little Shop of Horrors. Joshua Henry, The Wrong Man. Francis Jew, Soft Power. Larry Owens, A Strange Loop. Conrad Ricamora, Soft Power. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Larry Owens, A Strange Loop. First I'll thank Playwrights Horizons for the theater they're providing The chance for me to share with you Strange Loop Thanks Tim Sanford, Barbara Steven for always believing in my ability to tell the truth James Jason, John Andrew, L. Morgan, Antoine and John Michael To you all, thank you for this role being black and queer's a hard time Seems they always move the yard line Pain can wear you right down to the bone I have to thank my mom and family Through hard times you've always had me In your heart so I don't feel alone Anna, Olivia, George, Rachel, and Carolina too This award belongs to all of you This award, this award belongs to Jen and to our Montana and see Aquino and Steppenwolf who trained me how to be Lucy Stan, Nancy, Allie, Sydney, Page 7-3, the crew and Aaron, 
Shekinah's musical theater factory. Together we can weather every cyclone and milestone. We all know this award belongs to the Cortons, the Gravenies, Blackmans, and the Walkers, the First Men Squeak, Michael or Jackson. Thank you. With the Pulitzer in tow, Rona Raja Kent. Thank you for this role. Thank you to the Up Broadway League for this Lucille Lord Tell Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Musical. Please donate to the Actors Fund. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Be happy. Yeah. We'll be off Broadway soon. Hey, what's up? I'm Jeremy Poe. And I'm so, so happy that we are still finding ways to connect and celebrate the amazing work we saw this year in the theater. Um, we're raising money today. So if you have anything that you can give, we're doing that at www.actorsfund.org slash Lowertel. My first professional acting job in New York City was at Manhattan Theater Club's Off-Broadway Second Stage, um, a small but mighty theater where the cast of Choir Boy sang gospel spirituals for a packed house of 99 people. But no matter the size of that specific theater, we knew the power in the music. We knew and we recognized the power in storytelling, the healing and the comfort it um, provides. Today, we are recognizing and celebrating some very powerful women and their off-Broadway performances from this season. The nominees for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Musical are Issa Davis, The Secret Life of Bees. The Shans, The Secret Life of Bees. Beth Malone, The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Janelle McDermott, We're Gonna Die. Grace McLean, In the Green. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Grace McLean. In the green. Oh, my Lord, tell. I have to begin by acknowledging my sunburn. Um, I did go for a walk today. It was a beautiful day, and I sunscreened the, this half of my face because of this half was a mask, so that was fine, but clearly forgot this portion, and we've suffered because of it. But I decided to lean into it by wearing my 1940s Luau dress. Um, I'm also going to acknowledge that I have drunk all the champagne in the house. So we've moved on to the um, multi-green kombucha, which is quite good. So first of all, really, I would like to thank the Off-Broadway League for this incredible honor. This past season was full of extremely exciting, boundary-pushing theater and performances where I got to see my friends shine and where I got to make new friends and new talent crushes because there are a lot of sexy minds in the theater right now. And I find myself continually inspired by the work this community is making. I also just want to acknowledge that I am a little bit sad right now because we should be partying and hugging and drinking and dancing and getting our sweat on everybody else's sweat. Uh, but I also recognize that there's not a lot of room for that kind of should right now. So I just will say that I am sad that I don't get to be in a, a room with a lot of people that I respect and admire and I look forward to that day. Yeah, real hard. <laughs> Um, making in the green is one of the hardest and most rewarding things I have ever done. It's a show about seclusion, uh, about having to learn to live locked in a room with another person with whom you do not always agree. And it's about having to contend with your own darkness in order to approach healing. And I am deeply grateful to every single person who has supported me in the many years leading up to this production of In the Green and um, to everyone who supported us by coming out to see the show at LCT3. Uh, I especially want to thank my amazing creative team and band and cast, Ashley Perez Flanagan, Hannah Whitney, Rachel Duddy, and Mia Pak. 
Uh, I have to thank Natasha Sinha for championing this project um, from its baby days. My director, Lee Sunday Evans, for mucking through the muck with me to help make this the clearest, sharpest, most authentic version of the story to everybody at LCT3 for their kindness, patience, and wisdom to Evan Cabinet for so shrewdly and graciously making it all happen. I wanna thank my teams at Nicolosi and Abrams and Ted Schachter, my mom and my dad, and finally to my husband, Christopher Ryan Grant. I am being played off. Um, for I wanna thank him for putting up with me and feeding me and loving me and just letting me be a cuckoo bird. Um, Thank you so much. Congratulations to all the nominees and our winner tonight. We appreciate your work, your hard, hard work. Stay safe, stay healthy, sending my love to you. Hi everyone, I'm Tori Bailey and I'm coming to you virtually from Brooklyn. Although I'd much rather be amongst you all at the Skirball Center, standing on stage with George. As we all know, this is a trying and frightening time for everyone. And I think for all of us who have made theater our life's work, creating and telling stories to a live audience eight times a week, we are experiencing particular feelings of loss and dislocation. For the artists and the audiences, there's a connection missing that can't be replicated. Like every other organization, venue, and theater maker, TDF has had to pivot as the world changed overnight. We're working hard with the constituents in all our programs, education, access, membership, community partners, to keep them engaged and to ultimately prepare them for the time when we will come back. It's daily trial and error, but if there's one thing I've learned during my lifetime working in the theater, it's that one would be hard pressed to find a group of people better at rewriting, recalibrating and adjusting to adversity than theater people, especially the off-Broadway community that we honor and celebrate tonight. We will come back, we will dust ourselves off, we will make the changes we need to, and then we will do what we do best, tell stories. Congratulations to tonight's nominees and awardees. Thank you for a wonderful season and please take care of yourselves. We will have a lot of work to do rebuilding and TDF will be with you every step of the way. Together, I know we will move powerfully into the future. And now, on with the show. Thank you, Victoria Bailey from TDF. Oh, we all need discount tickets now more than ever. When we get back to work, the people are going to need the discount tickets. 50% off. Maybe you could give us 75% off. Please, please, TDF, please give. All right. Next up is the nominee for nominees. There are many of them for outstanding choreography. Ladies and gentlemen, the choreographer of the fantastic, flashy, beautiful, Moulin Rouge, ladies and gentlemen, Sonia Taya. Hi everyone, my name is Sonia Taya and I'm so excited to present the award for Outstanding Choreography. But before I do, I'd like to ask if you are able to please consider donating to the Actors Fund who's providing unprecedented assistance, not only to actors, but choreographers, writers, dressers, ushers, basically everyone in front of and behind the scenes. And we need them now more than ever. I am so grateful that I get to celebrate my fellow colleagues whose work is inspiring, vital, and incredibly inventive. I can't wait for my hand to open a theater door, for my back to sit in a seat, and for my eyes to watch your work with pride and admiration again after this intermission. Congratulations to all the nominees. Okay, let's do this. Woo! The nominees for Outstanding Choreography are... Camille A. Brown for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Camille A. Brown, Tony Stone. Raja Feather Kelly, A Strange Loop. Sam Pinkleton, Soft Power. Travis Wall, The Wrong Man. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Travis Wall, The Wrong Man. Like, what? Like, I wish you could have seen my reaction when I like read my name up on the screen. I like pushed backwards and I did a backflip over the couch. The couch flipped over with me. I started like running and screaming, doing spirals through my living room. I, 
I could not believe it. I've been dreaming about winning an award like this since I was like 12 years old dancing for Susan Stroman in the Music Man. Um, I have to thank the Off-Broadway League so, so much for this Lotel Award. Uh, most importantly, Tommy Kale, Ross Golan, and the entire creative team, the entire cast and crew of The Wrong Man. Uh, everybody came to work by putting their best foot forward. We were never stuck into a corner. The creative process was my favorite creative process I've ever been a part of. And I just can't wait to get back in the room and do it again. This award is not just mine. It's for every single person that worked on The Wrong Man. Thank you guys so, so much, especially my dancers. You guys slayed. Yeah! Congratulations to all the nominees. It's been an incredible season. And again, I cherish and admire your work so much and can't wait to see more from all of you. Hi, I'm Condola Rashad. And when it comes to the development of my own artistry, along with music, theater is my foundation. And even more specifically, the New York theater community is my foundation. And even more specifically than that, the off-Broadway theater community is my home. From when I was a child, um, watching shows from backstage, watching shows from the wings and putting puzzles together in green rooms and numerous tech rehearsals that I encountered <laughs> of my mother's performances to when I was an adult and making my introduction into the New York theater community through an off-Broadway production of Lynn Nottage's Ruin. Uh, the off-Broadway theater community will always have a very dear place in my heart. The Lucille Ortel Awards is a benefit for the Actors Fund and you can further support by going to actorsfund.org slash Lortel. Some of the most daring, enthusiastic, innovative, inventive, soulful, honest pieces of theater come out of our very own off-Broadway theater community. And I'm such a proud member of this community and I'm very, very happy to be here to announce the nominees for Outstanding Director. So, the nominees for Outstanding Director are Stephen Brackett, a strange Luke. Tina Satter, Is This a Room? Danya Tamor, Heroes of the Fourth Turning. Annie Tip, Octet. Les Waters, Dana H. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to Annie Tip, Octet. Hi, I'm Annie Tip. Welcome to my kitchen table in my house. I want to thank the Off-Broadway League for this incredible, incredible honor. Thank you so much. I'm really blown away and I feel insanely lucky to be included in this particular group of directors, um, all of whom I deeply, deeply admire uh, and I love their work. So Danya, Les, Stephen, and Tina, um, thank you. It's an honor to be included with you. I, I loved working on Actet. It was a really life-changing experience for me and the piece remains remarkably relevant, especially right now. Um, I owe everything to Dave Malloy, who in addition to being a really brilliant composer is just um, a, a really generous collaborator and he's a great friend. So thank you, Dave, for trusting me. Thank you to the Signature Feeder for trusting me as well, uh, to Paige, Beth, Jenna, uh, and a special thanks to Natasha Sinha, who is a champion of bold new work. Thank you all. Um, Octet wouldn't be what it is without its uh, brilliant eight performers. They're all, uh, they're all amazing artists in their own right, but when you're making a new work, you need a group of people to come together and get into the muck with you and be really egoless about the pursuit of this thing that you're making. And these artists um, were the perfect people for these roles. So thank you all. I really love you. And thank you to Or Matias, our music director, uh, as well as Simone Allen and our wonderful understudies. Uh, I also want to thank our stage management team, uh, led by Janae, and our beautiful design team, um, all wonderful artists. And I have to give a special shout out to Christopher Bowser, who has now been my close collaborator for 14 years. Um, so I consider myself very lucky. 
I would like to thank Ben Izo, my agent, SDC, my union, Drama League for your support over these last many years. Um, I would like to thank a few women whom I consider to be great mentors to me. So thank you, Lila Neugebauer, Leslie Headland, and the great Rachel Chafkin, uh, who I consider to be my president. Um, thank you all for believing in me when I did not. Um, and I also want to take a moment, um, because I have the time, because what is time, uh, to thank a few of my close collaborators who um, I've worked with over the years who have just helped make me into the artist that I am now and the artist I hope to become. Um, so thank you, uh, Claire Rothrock, Ryan Weir, Andrew Farmer, Molly Beach Murphy, Gina Phillips, James and Jerome, and um, oh, uh, I have a few um, dear friends who are also directors who have, have been at every preview, who have supported me, um, and in a sometimes very lonely role, it's nice to have the support of other um, amazing artists. So thank you, Jordan Fine, Andrew Neisler, Morgan Green, oh, and Michelle Ross, who was my associate on Octet. They're all brilliant directors. I'm lucky to call friends. Um, and thank you, Mikey Berenger. And lastly, I want to thank my mom. You gotta thank mom. Uh, thank you for supporting me. Uh, I dedicate this to uh, my late father, Ronald Tipp, who was a great artist. Um, he was a great artist um, and he he um, he lives in all of the work that I make and continue to make. So um, this is really special to me. I wish he could have been here to see it. Um, thank you again. I'm really, really honored by this and I hope everyone stays safe. Looking forward to being back sometime soon. Congratulations to all the nominees. We are so excited to see you next year. I cannot wait to see how this beautiful off-Broadway theater community rises from the ashes of the situation. I cannot wait. So congratulations, stay safe, bye. Don't forget to join us at hashtag Lortel Awards. Hi everyone, I'm George Forbes, Executive Director of the Lucia Lortel Foundations. On behalf of all of us at the Lortel Theatre Foundation, I'd like to thank our producing partner, the Off-Broadway League, and the Theatre Development Fund for helping us continue Ms. Lortel's legacy of honoring outstanding achievement off-Broadway. We were committed to continuing the Lortel Awards this year, and I'd like to personally thank the amazing team that made tonight possible. Michael Heitzman, our director, Bryant Falk, our editor and engineer, and the tireless staff of the foundation, especially Jeffrey Schubart, Nancy Herbitz, Mia Radia, Alana Canty Samuel, along with Rebecca Krigler and Jill Larson. And of course, I want to thank our wonderful presenters and our amazingly talented host, Mario Cantel. On behalf of the Lortel Foundation Board, it is my pleasure to announce tonight that the foundation will be making a grant of $50,000 to the Actors Fund and we challenge all of our viewers to help us match that figure. We're also announcing that we will be making a grant to TDF for $50,000 as well. TDF is a critical partner and hugely supportive of the off-Broadway community, and we are proud to support them through this difficult time. Finally, on behalf of all of us, I want to recognize all the first responders and frontline healthcare and essential workers. We are incredibly grateful for their service and sacrifice. I look forward to seeing you all in an off-Broadway lobby soon. Until then, I hope you are safe and healthy. Good night. Thank you, George Forbes, you silver fox, you. Next up are the nominees for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Play. And here to present this award is a friend and a magnificent actress and comedian. Uh, I, I, was, I did Pyramid with her. We did the game show. We're classics. And she just finished up her final season of Will and Grace, which came back and I thought was better than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, Deborah Messing. Hi, I'm Deborah Messing. This fall, I'll be back to the place I call home, the New York theater stage, for the debut of Birthday Candles on Broadway. But today, from my home on a computer, like most of you, we're joining together to honor the outstanding achievements of this year's off-Broadway performances. Now more than ever, 
we need to join together to support each other and our incredible theater community during this time of need. All donations tonight will benefit the Actors Fund in order to help our fellow actors and creatives emerge and strive through this time of uncertainty. And now, the nominees for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Play are... Charles Bush, The Confession of Lily Dare. Edmund Donovan, Greater Clements. Raul Esparza, Seared. Hamish Linklater, The Pain of My Belligerence. Aaron Yu, The Headlands. And the Lucia Lortel Award goes to Edmund Donovan, Greater Clements. Hi. So first of all, I'd like to thank the Off-Broadway League uh, and everyone involved in making the Lucille Lortel Awards happen each year, but particularly this year, uh, given the circumstances. I was fortunate enough to see so much incredible theater off-Broadway this year, and I'm just so inspired by all of you. Um, so congratulations to all of the nominees. I'd like to thank Sam Hunter for writing Greater Clements with so much sensitivity and skill. Davis McCallum for directing our production so deftly, and the two of you really as a duo for having so much faith in me as a collaborator. I admire you both tremendously. Uh, thank you to the entire cast uh, of Greater Clemens for your generosity and warmth and dedication each day. Andre Bishop and the entire Lincoln Center Theater team for creating an amazing home for us uh, and programming the play in the first place. To uh, Daniel Swee, Camille Hickman, uh, my agents and manager, uh, Sam, Elizabeth, Chase, thank you. I think that it, at its best, theater uh, can help us to challenge the way that we understand things. It can empower us by providing a sense of solidarity with those who have shared lived experiences. And I think sometimes it can even remind us why life is worth living. And I think this sense of hope is, is more important now than ever. Uh, while we're not necessarily making live theater or, or seeing it in the same way, uh, I just want to thank the entire Off-Broadway community and the theater community at large for continuing to fight for this art form. It's one of the singular treasures of my life. It's where I've made my best friends, met my greatest teachers, and had the greatest learning uh, moments in my life. So thank you. Uh, Sam's play, Greater Clements, is about and this gets said a lot, but it's about a lot of things, and I think that that's true. But one of the things that it's about is mental health and uh, how we do or don't understand it as a society. So I'm so honored to receive this award, and I'd just like to take a moment to recognize all of the people out there, uh, particularly at this time, who, to use language from the player, feeling weird or strange or particularly alone um, or irreparable in some way uh, and to remind them that, that they're not alone. And lastly, I'd like to thank uh, the health workers in New York City and across the world. Uh, my sister, Caroline Donovan, who's a nurse uh, at the Hospital for Special Surgery in Manhattan. You all are heroes and we're incredibly grateful for all of you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for your extraordinary work. Please stay safe, stay inspired, and we will get through this together. Hi everyone, my my, how I have missed you off Broadway. The Lucia Lortel Awards are always such a wonderful night and um, I'm sorry that we're not together, but it is really exciting that this is happening. I can't wait to be with you all again. Uh, my best to all the winners. And um, if you don't win, that's fun too. Um, this is especially moving because it's a benefit for the Actors Fund. Um, I hope you'll give. Uh, the Actors Fund is in overtime right now, to say the least, and uh, we need them. So if you can, it's um, theactorsfund.org backslash Lortel. Please give if you can. Okay. The nominees for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Play are Liza Colon-Zayas, 
Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven. Emily Davis, Is This a Room? April Mathis, Tony Stone. Zoe Winters, Heroes of the Fourth Turning. Kara Young, All the Natalie Portmans. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to... Emily Davis, Is This a Room? Hi there, and thank you so much for this award. Um, it is seriously so cool um, to be recognized alongside so many um, luminous performers and theater makers. Uh, thank you, Doug and Sarah at the Vineyard uh, for having us, and Tina Satter for making exactly what you wanted to make, um, and nothing short of that, even though it took time and notes. Uh, I'm so um, fortunate to work with T.L. Thompson, Becca Blackwell, Pete Simpson, Frank Boyd, Joe Lanza, and Jess Barbagallo, all of whom in my estimation are the real deal. Um, reality story continues and it has been such a privilege to share the beginning of her story both here and abroad. From the man in Slovenia who stood up and yelled that our show was a piece of shit uh, while it was happening, to the extremely warm and generous audiences that uh, we enjoyed here in New York. It's all been very educational and I'm so grateful for the experience. When we had a Kickstarter a couple years ago to make this show, it was um, theater artists who really showed up and gave what little they could give. And um, I have a feeling on the other side of this, it will be theater people again, who will give all that they are able to give to um, help one another make the things that they want to make. Thank you so much. Congratulations. I hope to see you all very soon and congratulations to all the winners tonight. I miss you guys. Hi, I'm Kelly O'Hara. I had the wonderful pleasure of performing in the first production ever staged in the house that Tim Sanford built. In 2003, just as Playwrights Horizons was opening its brand new doors on West 42nd Street, I met Tim Sanford as he produced My Life with Albertine, written by Richard Nelson and Ricky Ian Gordon. Tim put his dramaturgical genius to work in this piece based on Proust because, let's be honest, who else really could? I mean in the way Tim could. Tim knew Proust backwards and forwards. Tim knows most things this way. Yet aside from this, and seeing his name on my checks, of course, I might not have known just how much he knew or accomplished, not because I knew very little at that time about a lot of things, but because Tim Sanford is a mysterious man, a man more about craft and less about celebrity. In fact, he would credit his mentor and predecessor at Playwrights Horizons, Andre Bishop, for pushing the idea of building a new space. He would go on to credit the new playwrights themselves and an eager craft-driven staff for the award-winning successes of his theater company for all these years. Three Pulitzer Prize-winning plays, numerous Tony, Obie, and Lucille Lortel Award, among others. Even winning a drama desk for Playwrights Horizons itself for its continued service of celebrating new plays and their playwrights. But Tim has been behind all of this. We know this. Quietly reading plays, choosing the great American playwrights, raising the necessary funds to support them and bring them to us, to educate us, to expand us, and to inspire us to do more of the same. It's the craft that has mattered to Tim, and I think that will be his legacy. I was back with Tim at Playwrights Horizons in 2013, exactly 10 years after my first show for a musical called Far From Heaven, written by Richard Greenberg, with music and lyrics by Scott Frankel and Michael Corey. I was moved by the fact that so much had changed and grown there. Their beautiful space bearing witness to countless successes, careers taking off, artists celebrated, audiences blown away, forever changed and even offended at times in just the most artistic ways. But one thing remained the same, it was Tim. There he was in the shadows, it almost seemed, taking and giving notes as a great dramaturg does. Now these are only my impressions, but Tim was once quoted as saying that theater is the only art form that uses human beings as its clay. Well, I'm one of those human beings and I love this craft 
this art form. And I'm grateful for the ones who provide the space, literally and figuratively, for me to mold myself within it. Tim has been a major provider of that. I'm so honored to present Tim Sanford with the Lucille Lortel Lifetime Achievement Award. When George Forbes called me to tell me the Off-Broadway League and the Lortel Foundation wanted to honor me at the Lortel Awards, I have to admit, I did not envision the night like this. I have mixed feelings about awards ceremonies anyway, you know, let's rank our art and all that. But we theater makers are gregarious, affectionate lots, so these nights do give us occasion to hug and mingle and remember the sweet pleasures of making a play together. But we can't do that tonight. So I'll just have to pretend for a minute that we're all here. Hey, everyone. Hey, Michael. Hey, Will. Stephen. Raja. Danya. Hey, Hamish. Larry. Jam. El Morgan. Zoe. Michelle. Montana. Isabel. Dustin. Everyone. Hey, I love y'all. Didn't feel the same. Anyway, it's no good trying to pretend away the circumstances that have led us here. I expect everyone listening to me talk right now has lost someone to this disease and we haven't even had proper memorials for them. So feelings are bound to run very raw for some of us. And maybe we're not all ready to try to bring some perspective to the devastation, much less a little lightness, but I'm gonna try. There are a lot of unhinged conspiracy theories about COVID-19, some pretty hilarious and scary, but let me counter them by offering up an audacious paradox. From my blessedly insular perspective, COVID-19 looks like it came to earth in order to destroy theater. Think about it. How do we make theater? Real living people gather in a room and make art out of human beings? What's the opposite of social distancing? Maybe theater making. We can't make our art without each other. And that's precisely the attribute of theater that makes it so necessary and powerful in our digital world. But COVID-19 wants to suppress that story. It wants to be the star of our show and hog all the airwaves and make us talk the same. And what's more is that it uses the tool of our art form against us. Just one case of the disease can spread to dozens, hundreds, thousands in short order. But hey, wait, let, look over here. That's how plays work. Play starts with a writer alone in a room, but it comes to life through the same kind of exponential transmission of experience the disease uses. Only the theater gives life, the virus steals it. You can see this equation in the list of shout outs with which I started this speech. Both A Strange Loop and Heroes of the Fourth Turning began with writers, Michael R. Jackson, Will Arbery, and the vision of love and anger and grief and exaltation and everything that animated their vision and their creation spread exponentially first to the other artists who brought their works to life and then to the audiences that took the ride with them. These productions then became hot spots of artistic, emotional, transformative contagion. And I know these sh shows will go on to spread life and light in future productions to future audiences in years to come. There was an article in the Times several weeks ago that broke down step by step in remarkably clear and thorough detail exactly how the COVID-19 virus works and sidebarred about which steps in the chain might prove vulnerable to medications or vaccines or the host's immune systems. What struck me about the article was the devilish intricacy with which this microbial invader uses our own metabolism against us. It essentially changes the biochemistry of the host. But our body's response is just as remarkable. The host changes its processes in response and internalizes them. Are you familiar with Harold Bloom's book, Shakespeare and the Invention of the Human? His theory is one that I increasingly have come to embrace. Our writers toil in the laboratories of the human soil. Soul. <laughs> they take the ingredients of our humanness and their own experience and passion and wisdom and stir them into the crucible of our art form and fashion truth and beauty out of it. This truth and beauty flows through them and into us. This artistic transaction is metabolic and occurs exponentially. That's why I've always thought that the work we do, the opportunities we give writers in workshops, in rehearsals and productions, actually spreads throughout our community and the whole country. Their work, our work, defines us, becomes part of us and changes us. In my career at Play Arts Horizons, I've been privileged to bear witness and to some extent facilitate 
the artistic combustion of over 200 productions, over 150 of them as artistic director. I'm proud of this work, but humble about it too. I've always striven to put playwrights at the center of what we do, to trust them and champion them while at the same time challenging them to aim high and dig deep. I move on to the next phase of my life with these 200 or so plays deep inside me. Maybe I'll work with some of the writers again in my next endeavor. I will say that the last month or so has given me renewed admiration and reverence for the special alchemy that occurs between a writer and a black blank page in solitude. I don't know how they do it, frankly. But what I'm sure of is that our very best playwrights are using this time to digest what we are going through and finding ways to transform it into new work that will utterly surprise and motivate and redefine us in the future. I want to thank the Off-Broadway League and the Lortau Foundation for bestowing this great honor of this award upon me and in so doing, giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts about the importance of what we do. Good night. So, are you drunk yet? Are you high? What are you doing? You gotta do something. Cause when this is over, after I'm done taping this, I'm heading for the tequila. Cause there's nothing else. There's nothing else. I'm mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, to present the nominees for best revival is a great friend. You know her from Saturday Night Live. I worked with her many times in celebrity autobiography. We have so much fun. She is so brilliant. One of the funniest people, Rachel Dratch. Oh, hi. You caught me in the middle of my afternoon routine. You know, after a long day of homeschooling a nine-year-old and perfecting my sourdough starter, now's the time of day when I duck into my shower for a much-deserved primal scream. But instead of that, I've made time to announce the nominees for Outstanding Revival for the Lucia Lortel Awards. A bright room called day. Fires in the mirror. For colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Little Shop of Horrors. Macbeth. And the Lucia Lortel Award goes to... For colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Hello, I'm Oscar Eustace, Artistic Director of the Public Theater, and I want to thank the Lucille Lortel Committee for awarding us outstanding revival for our production of Intazaki Shangi's masterpiece for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. I want to thank Intazaki's brother and her sisters, Paul, Ifa, Bisa, for all of the support and for allowing us to do this remarkable show. Don from the estate, was also indispensable in making this happen. The producers on the public's end, Yuvika Tolani, Jeannie O'Hare, and Garlia Jones, did a beautiful job of creating a space where this masterpiece could happen. The cast was some of the most fierce, ferocious, beautiful, committed performers I've ever seen on a stage. They brought Entezaki's work to vibrant contemporary life and made the case for why this show is as relevant now as it ever was. She wrote not for her age, but for the ages. The leadership team, Leah Gardner, Camille Brown, Martha Red Brown, did a spectacular job on the directing, the choreography, and the music. The designers created an amazing environment. And all in all, it was a production that we were so proud to have brought back to vibrant life. Over 40 years ago, and Tazaki kicked down doors, some doors that we didn't even know were there. She kicked down doors for women. She kicked down doors for black women. She kicked down doors for experimental poetic theater artists and showed that a choreo poem about women could run on Broadway for over two years. Over 40 years later, we're incredibly proud to be the custodians of her legacy and to have brought back colored girls into the contemporary moment with all of the passion and urgency that the production created and that the play demands. I want to thank the Lucille Lortel Committee again and to say the obvious, this award is dedicated to Entezaki Shange, brilliant, brilliant writer, incandescent person, and our only regret is that she didn't live to see this. I hope she would have been as proud as we are.
Thank you very much. Congratulations, everyone. And if you can get to the Actors Fund, please go to actorsfund.org slash Lortel. Hello, hello, hello. It's Lynn Miranda. Greetings from my bathroom floor, the place with the best acoustics in this year, Quarren 2020. One of the silver linings of this has been watching the theater community and the wider world rally around the Actors Fund. Um, for years, it has been helping people in our industry when they need help the most. And this is the most critical test they've ever faced. So thank you for watching the Lortel Awards virtually, and thank you for supporting the Actors Fund. Even in this truncated season, it was an amazing year for musicals, um, and I'm honored to share this following list. The nominees for Outstanding Musical are... A Strange Loop, In the Green, Octet, Soft Power, The Secret Life of Bees. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to... Octet. Well, hi, uh, this is Dave Malloy. Uh, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone with the Lortels uh, for this amazing award and a huge thank you to everyone at The Signature for uh, putting that show up and, uh, and to everyone who helped make that show, especially Annie Tip, our amazing director, and Ora Matias, our amazing music director, and the cast and, and everyone. Okay, be safe out there. On behalf of Signature Theater, we'd like to thank the Lortel Committee, the Off-Broadway League, and TDF for this honor. And to the Lucille Lortel Foundation for being a longtime supporter of Signatures. This award is particularly meaningful for us because Dave Malloy is Signature Theater's first musical theater writer in residence, and Octet is the first musical ever that Signature has commissioned, produced, and developed. We watched Octet grow from the first song that Dave wrote, Glow, into a gorgeous, unique chamber choir musical that he developed alongside director Annie Tip and an incredibly talented ensemble cast and creative team. We also produced the first ever original cast recording in Signature's history for Octet with the generous support of donors, including through Kickstarter. We hope you will tune in and listen to this amazing cast of vocal talents. We wish to thank the Lupin Foundation and Nina B. Matus and Alan Gossel for their support of Signature's production. We also wish to thank the Harold and Mimi Steinberg Charitable Trust, Michael and Betty Rausch, and the Frederick Lowe Foundation for their support of Dave Malloy's Residency Five, and all of our generous donors and our board of directors for their steadfast support and commitment. We wish Octet a long life and we are so proud to have supported its growth. We can't wait to work with Dave and Annie again on their next musical theater venture at Signature. Thank you. Congratulations! Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here celebrating the Off-Broadway community. I've done nine Off-Broadway shows and each one is a treasure to me. It's my favorite place to be, to, to see things and to perform and, and I feel lucky to be part of this community. And so let's celebrate the great plays this year. The nominees for Outstanding Play are... Blacks. Halfway bitches go straight to heaven. Heroes of the Fourth Turning. Is this a room? Mrs. Murray's Menagerie. And the Lucille Lortel Award goes to... Heroes of the Fourth Turning. Hello, this is Will. I want to thank the Lortel Awards for this tremendous honor. Um, and I want to share this award with Playwrights Horizons, Tim Sanford, Adam Greenfield, Ashley Chang, Lizzie Stern, everyone on that staff who took a risk on this play. Um, and of course, my director, Danya Tamor, and my beautiful cast, Zoe Winters, John Strajewski, Jeb Krieger, Julia McDermott, and Michelle Pock, and my brilliant designers, Isabella Bird, Justin Ellington, Laura Jelinek, and Serafina Bush, um, and countless others. Um, 
this was such such an intrepid and fearless crew and um, it wouldn't have been possible if everyone weren't willing to fearlessly wade into the darkness um, and for that I am so grateful and it's so wonderful to see this work recognized and thank you so much and I hope everyone's staying safe. So great all being together and uh, this is also a benefit for the Actors Fund. So if you'd like to contribute, go to actorsfund.org slash Lortel. Yay! <laughs> Did you have fun? I had a blast. I have a migraine now, but I had a blast. Thank you for joining me at the 1920, not the year 1920, but 2019, 2020. Lucia Lortel Awards. I had a great time. Congratulations to all the nominees, all the winners, and the Actors Fund. This is for you once again. Thank you for everything you do. And everybody be safe, be careful, and uh, be as happy as you possibly can be. But I know that's hard right now because basically, I didn't get the happy gene anyway. So this is ridiculous. All right, I gotta go, I'm rambling. I gotta go. I gotta cook. My meatballs are burning.